So you're running Kubernetes, got a couple of GPUs, you want to mess around with different things like uh, open web UI or just download a couple of models so you can play around and do some local LLM. Well, today we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. We're going to install the NVIDIA GPU operator. We're going to set up time slicing. We're going to install two different virtual clusters. And then within those virtual clusters, we're going to install two different instances of open web UI and then download some models and then show how you can use them. We're also going to take a look at continue in VS Code so that you can use that for code completion or just ask it questions within your uh, VS Code uh, UI. If you want to check out how to do this, you can look at the links below in the description. There is a GitHub repository showing all the steps that I've taken and giving you access to some of those configuration files. But let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. And uh, let's go. This is based on a demo that I did recently in the vCluster office hours. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it brief here. If you wanna see like the full thing, go watch the office hours and I've got like 30 minutes of talking alongside uh, the demo. But with this demo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out and make sure that we're using the right context. So kubectx, um, we're gonna make sure we're using AI. AI is my cluster with a GPU. And then we're gonna install the GPU operator from NVIDIA and we're gonna use version 25.3.0. This is all in the NVIDIA documentation, basically following that on how to set up time slicing, how to get the operator installed. A uh, key thing to think about here is to install this in the host cluster to begin with, and then make sure that we've got four replicas. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create that time slicing configuration based on that uh, setup that I just showed you, and then we're going to patch it. So we got to patch it. So following the NVIDIA guidelines, right? You got to patch it to make sure it's working. And then what we'll do is we'll describe the node and make sure that we have four replicas. So one GPU, four replicas. So now we're going to go ahead and show that I've got a load balancer running. This is kind of showing how I'm setting this up locally. I'm using Etsy host, right? Like you would set up DNS and stuff like that if you're really using ingress, but to do it on-prem, I can do it like this. And then we're going to list out B clusters to make sure that we don't have any running. We don't have anything running currently, uh, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So one of the things to think about when we're creating this new one is that we need to have the nodes enabled true so that we can see the host cluster nodes, right? So we're going to create this virtual cluster off of that vCluster YAML. And then once that's done, we're going to make sure that our context has changed to the vCluster. Now that we're in the vCluster, we need to install the GPU operator again, but we need to set a couple of things to false, right? Like we don't need the tools kit again. We don't need the driver enabled. Uh, we're just gonna configure this without those and then deploy it, right? We just need to make sure that we have this runtime class and everything in the virtual cluster so that when it creates a pod, it's able to find that there are available GPUs, right? So as soon as we do that, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna create the time slicing here and then we're gonna patch it again just to make sure that everything shows that we have four replicas available because we're gonna need more than one replica if we're running more than one pod, right? We're run multiple pods, so I need to make sure that I have all that available. We'll describe the node. You know, right now there is only one replica before that, that patch actually takes uh, effect and now we have four. So you might have to refresh a couple of times to make sure that that replica count has gone up. And then what we can do is we will install Open Web UI with Helm here. So it's gonna install Open Web UI. It's gonna bring up a UI for us that we can actually interact with and download and install um, these different models. And then I have an ingress file here to where you can actually expose uh, the open web UI and then also expose that model if you want to through Olama. That way we can use it with continue later in the uh, end of this demo. Let's go ahead and create the ingress rules with the uh, file that I just specified. And then we're going to make sure that the ingress is configured before we open this endpoint in Firefox. So open it in Firefox, there's the UI, We've got to sign in all that stuff, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go install the other virtual cluster to show that we actually have multiple things accessing this single GPU with four replicas. All right, so we're gonna create that other virtual cluster. We're basically following along doing the same things that we just did a minute ago. Um, as soon as that virtual cluster is done, what we'll do is we'll get the context, we'll install the GPU operator, install time slicing, all that stuff, right? So there's different types of things that you can do with the NVIDIA graphics cards. You can do time slicing, you can do MIG, right? For older stuff, MIG isn't available, so you're gonna have to do time slicing. But then also it seems like people are doing a combination of multi-instance GPUs and time slicing, right? So maybe you can cut up that GPU into multiple things with, the, uh, with MIG. And then what you can do is also add time slicing so that you can get more use out of it, right? Like the next thing to think about is gonna be schedulers and all that, but we're not gonna talk about that yet, right? All right, so we're installing the GPU operator again. We're just following the exact same steps that we did on the first one, uh, but we're doing it on the second one. And then once that's done, we'll bring it up and we'll kind of show something cool that you can do where you can actually have that time slicing working and access that GPU uh, you know, on both of these things, right? If you didn't have multiple replicas, what would happen is you would actually try to create the pod and it would fail the schedule because it's not able to find a node with an actual available GPU. So we've got four replicas, we should be able to run four workloads. Um, and there's also a file in the GitHub repository for verifying time slicing that'll create four replicas and show you that it's actually working. So we show that in the vCluster office hours demo, not here. Uh, this is just kind of a, a, a more brief version 
that I wanted to show you how to get this stuff set, set up and running. Okay, so now that we have the UI open, what we have to do is we actually have to set up an account. So let's go ahead and hit get started. We're gonna put in our name, put in our email, create a password. We're gonna do it for both of these, right? So these are two different instances of open web UI running on the same Kubernetes cluster, separated by a virtual cluster. Each one's running in their own virtual cluster, right? So you can give this to your end users and they're not gonna be able to access each other's open web UI unless they have like a login or all that. So we did the same thing on the other one. What we're gonna do now is we need to go into the admin section. We need to go into the settings and then we're gonna go ahead and download a model. So here, we're just gonna go to Olama and like check out the models. Like you can click the link here so you can see what's available. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste in a model that we wanna use that we already knew about, Jimma 3 uh, 4B. Go ahead and download that model. Do the same thing in the other one. So this is the other instance of it. We'll go to admin panel. We'll go to settings. We'll go to models. And then what we're going to do is we are going to download a model, right? Make that model available. Now we're doing the same model for these, just to kind of show that you can have, you know, multiples of these running, but maybe you have a different model in this admin panel that's running that's a little bit better, right? Like these are very small models just to kind of show how it works. I wouldn't use these models if I'm actually doing real work, right? Like I want to make sure that I actually have, you know, larger models with more information that are trained on larger data sets so that the information that I'm getting is valid. Like as you'll see here in a minute, when we mess around and say, you know, what is vCluster? It's not right, right? But that's one thing you got to think about when you're getting models is how large are my GPUs? How large of a model can I load, right? Like if you've got 16 gig GPUs, then you're not gonna be able to run that big of a model, right? Like that's why the data center GPUs are so large compared to the smaller ones that you see, you know, for consumer grade stuff. This stuff's all running on a 5070 uh, Ti. So it's not running on, you know, the data center grade, which is why I can only do time slicing. But the point of this is to show, hey, I'm asking, uh, you know, two different two different sessions, what is vCluster in 5,000 words? And it's completely wrong, right? Completely wrong. But you know, you have to you have to figure out like how to actually find the wrong information and fix it with some of these models. But for a better model, like I'm gonna get a little bit better information like ChatGPT or something like that. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out what we can configure with continue. So now that we've shown that we can actually run two different, two different chats, right? Like, and get information from them, we're actually hitting those two different models at the same time, time slicing is working. All right, so we're getting continue set up. We see that we have the API base is the actual endpoint of our model that we just created. Let's go ahead and enable continue. This will uh, allow me to actually use that configuration and uh, interact with it, right? It's, I disable it before because like if, I have, if I'm not serving the model, then it's just gonna keep erroring out because I've got this connected to a local LLM. All right, so here, ask it a question, that's working, but let's go ahead and create a new file here and we'll call it, you know, vibe.yaml, right? Like go along with everything else. Everyone's been talking about vibe coding anyways. Uh, vibe.yaml, and then what we're gonna do is do some code, com or generate code. So we're gonna do command I to generate the code. I'm gonna say, you know, make an Nginx deployment. And I'm not giving it enough information right now, you know, with three replicas. All right, that's not right. Let's give it Let's give it three replicas for Kubernetes, right? Like, okay, here's an actual deployment with Nginx for Kubernetes. You gotta delete the image out of the bottom, but it gave me what I was looking for, right? This is a pretty small model, so it can help me with some things. But you know, the larger the model, the better the information you're gonna get, the better results, that kind of stuff. So that's just a quick demo showing what you can do with the NVIDIA GPU operator, time slicing, and uh, creating a multi-tenant environment with multiple virtual clusters and open web UI. It's pretty easy to get configured. If you wanna check it out and get it set up, like I said, check the description, head over to GitHub and you know start the repository if you want so you can follow it along because we have a bunch of examples in there. Or go to the GitHub, you know, vCluster repository, star that. Like, subscribe, all that. Let me know what you wanna see next, right? Maybe we're gonna talk about like the Kai scheduler and some other ways you can schedule things because now that you've got this running, you need to make sure that you're scheduling efficiently, right? Like you're not just doing a round robin and all this stuff. Like you gotta start thinking about other things within Kubernetes and using the operator, right? And make sure that you subscribe so you get all the updates in the latest videos. Like we're gonna be doing a bunch of live streaming um, and we're gonna be creating some more videos like this talking about what you can do with GPUs and what you can do with vCluster. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.